Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching, thank you so much for listening. It's been a long time since I've been on this side of the camera and I've, I've really missed it, I've missed talking to you. And um, I pray that you've enjoyed my recent messages regarding Bible prophecy and looking into the scriptures and what have you. I'm going to continue with this video because I've been waiting on some sound, some outdoor noise to just dissipate, but it's not happening. It's been a couple of hours, there's a lot of commotion outside, but I'm going to continue anyway. I'm really looking forward to sharing this message with you friends, and it's about one of the things that the Lord Jesus Christ will be doing when he returns, and as you may have um, remembered from before, my video is still in the processing stage. The video I did over two weeks ago now regarding the, the Lord Jesus Christ return and what it is he will actually do when he comes. So it's still in the processing stage. I can't re-upload it because I didn't sadly back it up. Fifi. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. She wants to participate. Maybe one day I'll bring her on the camera. So I'm still waiting for that video to complete its processing and I pray that it will be very timely when it's all ready, and ready to go. But today's message is little excerpt from that message that I did and I really looking I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you. <laughs> I pray that you will watch this, like this, share it please, and um, keep your Bibles ready and also a notepad. I'm also going to share with you something a little special in this video so i pray that you will stick around to join in with me nudge nudge wink wink when that moment comes anyway without further ado let's begin okay my dear friends so we're going to begin with the scriptures of course and I'm, today i'm going to share with you from let's see one two three four particular chapters from the book of jeremiah so today I'm going to go into one book of the Bible, a prophetic book. Wonderful, wonderful scriptures here, friends. I need to share this with you. This basically gives us a very, very good indication of one of the things that the Lord Jesus Christ will do, will accomplish when he returns. Many people look forward to the day of the Lord when he returns. We, Of course, we're looking forward to it. I talk a lot about it on my channel. This is one of those things that is huge um, in regards to what he does when he returns. And this is about the restoration of his people, of Israel and of Judah. And I want to share with you some wonderful scriptures from, again, three chapters from, no, four chapters from the book of Jeremiah and so let's begin friends stay with me till the end I've got something special I'd like to share with you let's begin Jeremiah chapter 30 now as I was reading preparing notes um, I was sort of undecided on how to present these scriptures to you because they're very lengthy now if you don't mind and if you're up for it we're going to read the entire portion of the scriptures okay friends so let's begin Jeremiah chapter 30 Verse 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah. He hasn't forgotten about them, you guys. It's not just about us Gentiles. <laughs> The plan and purposes of God are so wonderful, so marvellous. It's going to take us a lifetime to just understand the depths of his mysteries, you guys. But it's wonderful to try and it's a blessing to try also. That I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land, sorry about that Muslims, that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. My condolences, Muslims. Let's continue. But you can also join yourself to the Lord. You can be rooted and grounded and grafted in the vine. So you don't need to be left out. Call upon the name of the Lord today while he may be found. The Lord is merciful and very gracious. Verse 4. Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Lord, 
We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear and not of peace. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labour with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labour, and all faces turn pale? Alas, verse 7, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. I have a, mes a message pending. Friends, it's been almost a year. I've been working on this message and um, I've been in prayer in terms of how to present the message to you all. And so for those of you who have watched my videos regarding the rapture, the great tribulation, this Jacob's trouble was to be uh, part three in that series. I'm still working on it. I have not forgotten. And just in case you may have wondered that I've forgotten about it, I haven't. I'm being very careful with the Lord's timing um, because this, this is a great deal of information, scripturally speaking, and it's going to be a difficult message. So I'm working on that, friends, and Lord willing, I will publish, record and publish it in due time. But he shall be saved out of it. So there's a promise, or let's say it's determined according to the word of God. There is a time of great difficulty coming for Jacob, also known as Israel. And that time we consider to be the great tribulation. But what happens after this season of great trials and tribulations, friends, for Israel? Let's read on. Verse 8. <clears throat> for it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck. <clears throat> Excuse me. That happens every single time. I could be talking fine all day. I sit to record and then, oh, and will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them. Verse 9. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Verse 10. Therefore, do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save you from afar. And your seed from the land of their captivity. So there's a promise of deliverance coming to Israel, who will be saved from afar, and their seed from the land of their captivity, because they've been dispersed amongst the nations, right, friends? Hello, Fifi, I know. Jacob shall return and have rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. There's Jesus, our Yeshua. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end of you. But I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. For thus says the Lord, Your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe, there is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. Why do you cry about your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable. Because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased, I have done these things to you. The Lord is so good. He tells us why he does what he does. <clears throat> he makes it known to the nations, to the peoples, that he alone is God. And for certain reasons, he allows certain things to happen. And he tells us why. Verse 16. I don't know how far we'll go with this, you guys. Shall I read the whole chapter is very long verse 16 <clears throat> therefore all those who devour you shall be devoured something to think about isn't it let me repeat therefore all those who devour you jacob israel shall be devoured and all your adversaries every one of them shall go into captivity those who plunder you shall become plunder. And all who prey upon you, I will make a prey. 
for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, no one seeks her. <clears throat> pay attention. Those who are against Zion, pay attention to the word of the Lord. Verse 18, thus says the Lord. Here we go, you guys. Drum roll. Behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be built upon its own mound and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Verse 20, this is how the Lord restores, redeems, delivers, recompense. This is how he does it. <clears throat> Verse 20, their children also shall be as before and their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all who oppress them. Verse 21, their nobles shall be from among them and their governor shall come from their midst. Then I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach me. For who is this who pledged his heart to approach me, says the Lord? Verse 22, you shall be my people and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not return until he has done it, and until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will consider it. Marvellous. Next chapter, we were in chapter 30 of Jeremiah. We're going to go over to 31, Jeremiah. There are 40 verses in this. Let's go. <clears throat> the remnant of Israel saved at that same time. Friends, who do you think is doing the saving here? The Lord, right? Jesus? Yes. The Lord Jesus when he returns. The Holy One of Israel when he returns. Verse 1. At the same time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Again, it says, verse 2, thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness, Israel, when I went to give him rest. The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt, O virgin of Israel. You shall again be adorned with your tambourines and shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. You shall yet plant vines on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and eat them as ordinary food. For there shall be a day when the watchmen will cry on Mount Ephraim, Arise and let us go up to Zion. Mount Zion, so of course it's going to be go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Why? Because he's going to be there. He's going to be there, you guys. Fifi, darling, hush, hush. Verse 7, for thus is the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and the one who labours with child together. A great throng shall return there. They shall come with weeping and with supplications I will lead them, deep repentance. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Does that not give you shivers? How glorious is this, you guys? 
verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. That reminds me, please refer to Ezekiel chapter 34. Let's continue verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of one stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, streaming to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and new wine and oil. For the young of the flock and the herd, their souls shall be like a well-watered garden and they shall sorrow no more at all. <clears throat> Then the virgins shall rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning to joy, beauty for ashes, right? And will comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. Verse 14, I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I have to move on because there's more to read, friends, please. Please, will you read the rest of this portion of scripture, Jeremiah 31? Oh, I have to continue. I can't skip it. Let's read. 16, thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself. You have chastised me and I was chastised like an untrained bull. Restore me and I will return, for you are the Lord my God. Surely after my turning I repented and after I was instructed, I struck myself on the thigh. I was ashamed, yes, even humiliated, because I bore the reproach of my youth. Verse 20. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For though I spoke against him, I earnestly remember him still. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, says the Lord. There's so much to say here regarding Ephraim and the blessing. I have to stay within the subject matter. Perhaps if you're interested, leave me a comment under the video if you'd like to hear that. <clears throat> Verse 21. Set up signposts, make landmarks, set your heart toward the highway, the way in which you went. Turn back, O Virgin of Israel, turn back to these your cities. How long will you gad about, O you black backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall encompass a man. Some verses have that to mean um, completely something different, so I don't know what you think about that. Verse 23. <laughs> I have to go on. Let's go on. Jeremiah. I want you to read the whole chapter, friends, please. Jeremiah 32. Another portion that shows us what the Lord will do when he returns. Let's see. Where can I begin from? I'm going to go down and begin reading from verse 36 in Jeremiah 32. Just do um, speed things up a little bit here. I could, of course, read the whole text, but <clears throat> it's going to be a lot, a lot of reading, and I need to take a breather. And um, it also helps you to also read in your own time. So, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 36. Now, therefore, says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city of which you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger. I'm so sorry, friends. If you can hear like noise in the background, it's coming from outside the house. It's very distracting to me. I hope it's not distracting to you. In my fury and in great wrath, I will bring them back to this place. I will cause them to dwell safely. If the word of the Lord says so, and if this is him speaking, it's a done deal. Amen. Verse 38. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. Then I will give them one heart and one way, 
that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Verse 41. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good and I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. Wow. Listen to this. <clears throat> the Lord always chastises his people, does he not, friends? But where's his heart? What is his heart's purpose? What's his goal? To redeem, to restore, to save. He desires mercy. Verse 42, listen to this. For thus says the Lord, just as I have brought all this great calamity on this people... So I will bring on them all the good that I have promised them. Take that, Israel haters. I want to repeat that. Verse 42. For thus says the Lord, just as I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will bring on them all the good that I have promised them. He keeps his promises. Verse 43. And fields will be bought into this land of which you say it is desolate without man or beast. It has been given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men will buy fields for money, sign deeds and seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin. In the places around Jerusalem, in the cities of Judah, in the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south. For I will cause their captives to return, says the Lord. Done. Amen. Chapter 33, the same book, Jeremiah, continuing over. Next chapter, let's read from verse 14. Praise the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> I'm going to read from verse 14. Read with me, friends. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. Are you familiar with the two houses situation, the divorce, the division of the kingdom, friends? God keeps his promises, you guys. <clears throat> He's going to unite them together. As mentioned in Ezekiel, the two branches becoming one in his hand, Ephraim and Judah. Again, I'll have to do a message on that, I think, because there's so much depth into this aspect of the Lord bringing restoration to his people. They're so, the, the riches are just so deep, you guys. Verse 15. <clears throat> in those days, and at that time, I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness. Jesus. This is Jesus. <coughs> what day? What time? The time and the days when he's going to bring them back. That he will perform that good thing which I had promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. Muslims, if you're listening, are you aware that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, he alone will execute judgment and righteousness in the earth and the place, the location of where he shall bring forth this execution of judgment and righteousness will be in Zion, in Jerusalem, in Israel. But it won't be the Israel of today. 
No. It will be a restored, a delivered, a glorious Jerusalem. Because the king will be residing there. That's the difference. Verse 16. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called. The Lord our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor shall the priests, why is that? Because it's going to be an everlasting kingdom. Remember the promise to David on his throne with the Messiah? Nor shall the priests, the Levites, lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me to kindle grain offerings and to sacrifice continually. This is regarding the new temple. That will be present in the land when the Lord Jesus returns. <clears throat> and that's another message right there. <laughs> Continue. Verse 19. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Thus says the Lord, If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that there will, be, there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David my servant so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, the stars, right, nor the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the descendants of David, my servant, and the Levites who minister to me. The Lord Jesus Christ is not done with Jerusalem. It's not over. Verse 23, moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, have you not considered what these people have spoken, saying, the two families which the Lord has chosen, he has also cast them off. Thus they have despised my people as if they should no more be a nation before them. Where, what are the two families? Israel and Jacob, you guys. <clears throat> Sorry, Israel and Judah two houses that were divided there was a split in the kingdom it wasn't a united kingdom <coughs> let's continue i don't know what's up with fifi today verse 25 thus is the lord are you giving me an amen fifi if my covenant is not with day and night and if i have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captives to return and will have mercy on them. It's a done deal. The word of the Lord says so, and we all say, Amen. So be it, Lord. Now, <clears throat> I couldn't help but share this with you also. Revelation 21 mention something marvelous let me show you <clears throat> i'm so sorry you guys <laughs> thank you lord for your grace your grace is sufficient lord revelation chapter 21 all things made new right okay let's see what does it say here verse one now i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. It just happens to be no more sea. <laughs> then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle or dwelling of God is with men and he will dwell with them. This is in the millennium. And they shall be his people. <coughs> God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Let's carry on. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, 
right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Then he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. This is the Lord Jesus speaking here. Verse 8 But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Verse 9 <clears throat> Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Listen, friends, pay attention, listen to this. Verse 12. Also, she had a great and high wall, with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates. Picture that, I can't even, I can't even imagine it, but try to. And names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south and three gates on the west. The same design in the days of the Exodus. If you go back and read verse 14, not finished, check this out. <clears throat> now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. You've got both the old and the new in this glorious architectural wonder. <coughs> I'm sorry. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates and its wall. The city is laid out as a square, its length is as great as its breadth and so forth. It gives you the information, description of how what materials, what crystals and gems this building is made out of. It's glorious, you guys. Read the whole scripture. Read the whole chapter in to the end. Now, what was I sharing with you? I'm sharing with you, friends, the fact that when the Lord returns, he's bringing full and complete restoration <clears throat> of Israel and of Judah as well as the other things, wonderful things he's going to do when he returns. But this is key, monumental to his return. It's a major part of what he's going to do, you guys. Not only that, he's also going to judge in his righteousness and in his justice those nations where these people were put to shame. <clears throat> serious business so we pray for the peace of Jerusalem we pray for the soon coming return of our Lord Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords that he might reign in his rightful place his rightful position in Jerusalem in Zion and pray for the peace of the nation because ultimately when the Prince of Peace comes there will be peace so we're praying for the return of the Lord for these people and just doing this whole study <clears throat> reminded me of a song. I want to share that with you now. <laughs> I love to sing this. I was going to sing it, but my throat is playing up right now. So I won't, um, I won't do that right now. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You may have heard of this song before, friends. I'll let you look at the, the lyrics there for a moment.
<clears throat> it's a glorious song. It's beautiful. You've heard it. I'm sure you have. And it's basically, it has a very sad melody to it. But the wording is just so prophetic. It's incredibly prophetic. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. <laughs> I tried, I tried. I could not do that any justice. What I'd like to do is to leave you with a beautiful song. And just think about all those beautiful scriptures I just shared with you from the precious holy word of God, friends. Again, those scriptures are Jeremiah chapter 30, Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 33. And finally, I had to also include <laughs> Revelation chapter 21. And I'm going to now leave you with this beautiful song until it ends. Okay, friends, I love you. Please share this.
Okay, friends, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed that. 